What's up everyone, welcome back to another video. Today is part two of how to stream an instrument to Twitch, YouTube or Facebook. Now, if you missed part one, don't worry, link will be up here and down in the description. In that video, I tell you all of the gear and everything that you need to know to get started. But today's video is specifically how to turn that gear into a stream. Now, just before we go any further, please do make sure to subscribe to the channel and like the video and all that good stuff for me. I really do appreciate it, it helps me out. Also, what helps me out is sponsors on the videos. Let's pay some bills before we get started. I'm going to quickly thank today's sponsor. So today's video is sponsored once again by our very good friends over at DistroKid. So if you don't know who DistroKid are, they are an online distributor of music. So if you make music in any fashion and you want to get that online so that your fans can stream it and download it, this is, in my humble opinion, the best way that you can do it. For an annual subscription fee, you can get unlimited uploads. So whether you upload one song in that year or a thousand, they've got you covered. And there's so many great quirks and extra features on DistroKid, which I think makes it extra professional so you can get your Spotify account verified, amazeballs. You can get your official YouTube page, profesh. You can make hyperlinks, teaser videos. You can set up teams for your collaborators to get paid automatically. Awesome. And I can't believe I don't think I've ever said this before on one of these ads. DistroKid don't take a cut of your royalty. So you keep 100% of your royalties. That's pretty damn rad. And on top of all of those things, we have a 7% link. Uh, no, we have a 7% description in the link below. So make sure to use that to get 7% off your first annual subscription. I'm out of breath, mate. Let me, let me, for the, uh, <laughs> for the TLDR, uh, let me sum it up in three ways. DistroKid is super affordable, they're super reliable, and it's hella professional. Well, I would say in just three words, Rainer, really, <laughs> really um, awesome. Ryan, you know that's just two words, right? Oh, yeah, you're right. Uh, really, very awesome. <laughs> um, <laughs> for once, I, uh, for once, I think I agree with Ryan. They are really very awesome. <laughs> Ryan, dude, you check out the link in the description. Ryan, you've got to stop interrupting. Well, you said description in the link, mate. You don't know what you're talking about either. Okay, so once you've installed and opened up OBS, you're going to be presented with a screen that looks a little bit like mine right now. So you'll see we've got a blank screen here. We've got a, a tab here called Scenes. We've got Sources, Audio Mixer and Controls. So just to explain what these all are, the Scenes is your different collection of sources, essentially. Uh, the Sources are the different elements you add to each scene. Audio Mixer is how you control the volume of your different sources. Uh, and then Controls is where we go to our our settings and start our stream and all that different stuff. So first of all, we're going to open up the settings here and you want to go down to stream. So once you're in here, you're going to see a thing called service and a, a drop down menu of the different streaming platforms that you can stream to. In our case, we're going to be using Twitch. So we select that and then you'll be asked to log in. I've already logged in, so I won't be doing that now. But once you've logged in, that's awesome. You can move on to the next tab, which is going to be output. So you come over to output, you wanna make sure your output mode is set to advanced rather than simple. So we come down to advanced uh, and then just to th see, this is where we can get pretty nerdy about what all these different things mean. However, if you're gonna be streaming at 1080, 60 frames a second, which is how most people stream, you just need to copy the settings that I've got on screen right now because they are the best settings to stream that resolution and frame rate in. This is actually the settings that are recommended by Twitch and there's a link in the description in case you're not using the same like aspect, uh, not aspect ratio. If you're not using the same resolution side and frame rate, so if you're doing like 720, 30 frames, the, the settings might be a bit different. So if you're 1080, 60, copy these settings. If not, you look at the link down below and it will show you what you need to change them to. That was a really big mouthful for some reason. I really struggled with that sentence. But anyway, once we've done that, you can hit uh, you can hit video and you come down to video. This is an important one. So you're gonna see a few things here. We've got base canvas resolution. You've got output scaled resolution. You've got downscale filter and your, uh, your thing here which says PAL or you've got 24 NTSC. This is basically where you're choosing your frame rate for your stream. I stream at 50 frames per second uh, because I'm British. All right, you can have a go at me. It's not 60. I could do 60, but it's easier for me to do 50. That's a whole nother story. <laughs> but essentially, you choose your, uh, your wow, words. You choose your frame rate here 
uh, and the base canvas resolution is basically, this is the resolution of the black screen that you're gonna be building your stream on that you can see uh, here in OBS, right? That black screen, that's the resolution that you're choosing for base canvas resolution, so 1080p in our case. And then output scaled resolution is if you want to be sending your stream to Twitch at maybe a lower or even a higher resolution. So let's say for example, we build our stream on a 1080 canvas, but our PC isn't quite powerful enough to be encoding that and streaming that, so you wanna downgrade it to 720. This is where you can change this one uh, from the drop down menu to 720p, uh, and then the OBS program will automatically download downscale that for you as it sent it to Twitch. So it's important also to make sure your downscale filter is set correctly too. Now, I don't know too much about what these different words mean. However, from experience and from doing some research, I know that, I know that the bicubic one is the best one if you are gonna be uh, downscaling your stream. I'm not, I'm gonna be leaving it at 1080, so we can leave, we can leave this one at 1080p. Boom, there you go. Now the next tab you wanna come down to is None of them. <laughs> I think we're done there for now. So once you've logged into your uh, streaming program, once you've got all these settings right, and once you've sorted out your, uh, your your base canvas and all that stuff, just hit apply and OK, and we're back to our blank screen. Now, in your empty scene here, which you can rename if you want to, I'm not going to for the tutorial, this is where we can start adding our different sources. So our camera, our audio, our overlays, and all that different stuff. I would recommend the first thing that you add is your camera because that's gonna be the thing that you want underneath all of the other sources, right? Uh, so you go to the plus icon at the bottom here and video capture device. Now we can name this one, I'm gonna name it Cam Link for the Cam Link. Uh, 4K, which is my capture card. You can see it pops up here. We've got a device drop down list so you can choose from your capture cards that you've got plugged into your PC. I'm really struggling to do words today. You can choose your capture card from the drop down list. So we've got Camlink 4K, hit OK, and boom, there we go. We've got a camera in our stream, amazing. So the next thing you wanna do is add your audio device. So uh, we had the uh, Behringer XR18. So we, again, we go down to the plus icon, Audio input capture, we can name this again, let's just call it X18. We hit OK, and then from the device drop down, we can hit Behringer XR18 or whatever your uh, capture device is for your audio and hit OK, and boom! Now we have audio and a camera. Amazing stuff. Now you'll see here over in audio mixer, you've got uh, the audio from, from all of your different sources. Now it's worth muting your camera because otherwise you're gonna get some weird horrible sounds from your camera's audio as well as your, your uh, mixer or your capture card, whatever it is, capture card. I really need to learn to script these videos, man. I, I just, I say so many stupid things. <laughs> From your audio interface is what I meant to say. So you can, you can mute those here over in the audio mixer. And pro tip, if you right click that little cog, you can even hide the ones that you're not using so it's not as cluttered. Boom, there we go. So you've got your camera added and you've got your audio added. That's pretty much it if you wanna start streaming, but something that's gonna make it even better is adding an overlay. Now I make my overlays on Stream Elements. Stream Elements is free. You just need to go to streamelements.com and log in with your Twitch account. So. Once you are logged in, you're gonna be presented with the home screen that looks like this one here. Uh, then you wanna go over to my overlays on the left hand side. Yours will be blank, although I've already got all these overlays I've made before. You can go up to create blank overlay uh, and here, you are gonna be able to add all the different things you want. So you can add your alert box. So this is where your different things like for your uh, subscribers and followers and stuff. So let me do an example here. If we do a follower event, woohoo, there is an alert for your stream. Now, this can, this can take you, you can really deep dive and get nerdy about this. I spent so long making my overlay uh, and I'm really proud of it. So for the sake of this video, I'm gonna be using one of the overlays I already have. So I'm gonna come into drum stream February 2021 playing. 
it sounds like a weird title, but it makes sense to me. Now, once you've, you, you've completed your overlay and you're happy with it, you wanna click this button up here to copy the overlay URL, because what we're actually doing is adding this into OBS as a browser source. So again, plus the, hit the plus icon, then you go to browser. We're gonna call this one overlay. Now, in the URL section here, you wanna copy in that URL we just, uh, you wanna paste in the URL we copied from Stream Elements, and you wanna make sure to set your width and height to the same as your overlay. So in our case, it was a 1080 resolution one, so the width would be 1920. Your height is gonna be 1080, and hit OK. And you want this one to be on top, because remember how I said this is like layers? Whatever's at the bottom of your source list uh, is gonna be underneath the thing that's next to it. So a good rule of thumb, I like to put all of my audio stuff at the bottom, as it's not a visual representation on screen. It doesn't really matter where they are, but just for the sake of keeping things neat and tidy, I always put those at the bottom. Next would be my camera, and then on top of that would be my overlay. So you can see here in the bottom right-hand corner, we've got like my daily subscriber goal. In the middle, we've got my donation goal. And down there on the left, uh, we've actually got something which is where I have all of my different social media links flashing up and other things, which I'm not gonna add today. But you can see we've now got an overlay. We, we, uh, my alerts are all built into this uh, overlay as well. So if I do a test alert right now uh, and quickly jump back into OBS, there we go, the audio was doubled, sorry about that. But you can see my alert pops up here. Um, Mara Lee followed, boom, there we go. So that's basically how you set up your stream. We've got our audio, we've got our camera, and we've got our overlay, and anything else you wanna add is basically just free choice. It's your turn to get creative now. You can do so many things with OBS. And look, I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm not a super techie guy. I've never really done a tutorial capturing my screen like this before. So hopefully you were able to follow along with this, and uh, hopefully you're able to get some than out of it, but there are so many great channels that do really intricate videos about how to set up OBS and set up really cool stuff for your stream. So do make sure to check out those videos as well. But the only thing left to do now is hit the start stream button and uh, do a stream. So uh, have fun with that. Hopefully this really helped uh, cut back to other Rainer for the outro of the video. <laughs> so there we go. I hope you enjoyed today's video. That was part two on how to stream an instrument to Twitch, YouTube and Facebook. If there's anything else you wanna know or if you've got any questions about today's video, please do leave that down in the comments. And also let me know if you wanna see a third video in the series about how I made my overlays and everything that I use on stream. The best way to ask me any of these questions really probably is just to jump in a stream. So I stream on Twitch every Sunday. Make sure to come check it out. Link down below. Do all the usual stuff. Subscribe, like, all the cool shiz. And thank you very much for watching. I appreciate it. I'll see you very, very soon for another video. And whatever you're doing today, go out and smash it. Oh, finally, mate. I've been filming this video since 1973. I've done so many takes today, dude. See you next time. <laughs>